It's in the wonderful name of Jesus and I want to welcome you this evening to joining us. Greetings to the Potter's House family and to all those that have been joining us. There's been many that have been following us. We appreciate you. We pray that this broadcast and this teach time has been a blessing to you. Um, I also want to greet you on this Ascension Day as we remember that the Lord Jesus Christ as He ascended up into heaven. This is one of those holy days that we celebrate as the believers and as the Christians and as a very, very important day in the Christian calendar because not only do we celebrate the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ or even His death, but we believe also in His resurrection. But in that, after the resurrection, 40 days after the resurrection, he ascended up to the Father. And the ascension is so important to our belief because there is the blessed promise and there are so many keys that links to the bodily return of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so I want to share with you some thoughts today and I pray that you will be blessed. I believe that the ascension is a promise that was kept Jesus says, I will go to the Father. That's a promise kept. And there is a promise also that is given, a promise that is attached to it, that he says, the same way I go, I will return. So I, I, I want to say to you today, for me, as I looked at the Ascension Day celebration, I've entitled the message today, Mission Accomplished. The Ascension of the Lord Jesus back to the Father was an indication that His mission on the earth was accomplished. His mission on the earth was fulfilled. Let's go to the, with, with me to the book of Luke, chapter 24, verse 49 to 53. He says, I am going to send you what my Father has promised, but stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. And when he had led them out of the vicinity of Bethany, he lifted up his hands and he blessed them. While he was blessing them, he left them and was taken up into heaven. Then when they, wor then they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they stayed continually at the temple, praising God. Look at what Jesus, in his final words, in his final discourse with the disciples and those that were following him. He says, I send you what my father promised, but stay a little while. There is something very powerful in that statement. He says, Stay in the city until, until you are clothed with power from on high. I want you to understand Jesus' final statement to the body of Christ that was, that was following him. He says, don't leave until you endure with power. We know later on in Acts chapter 1 and Acts chapter 2, we see the, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. But he says, don't leave until you are clothed with power from on high. I'm praying that each and every person that is watching me, each and every person that is following the series on Fresh Fire, I'm praying that in this time of waiting, in this time as we begin to, 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 to go through the word of the Lord, that you would be clothed with power from on high. I pray that the heavens will be opened over your life. You would experience an outpouring of the Holy Spirit like you've never seen before. And the Bible says, and Jesus continued, and as he left the city and he was uh, at the vicinity of Bethany, he lifted up his hands and he blessed them. The last words was, wait to be clothed with power. The last action was, he blessed them. He raised his hands towards them and he blessed them. 
I want you to know today. The Bible says as he was, uh, 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 and, and then he, he started ascending to heaven. While he was blessing them. You are blessed. You are covered. There is a continuous hand of the Lord that will always be over your life. In Acts chapter nine, 1 verse 9 to 11. After he, has, after he had said this, he was taken away before their eyes. And a cloud hid them from his sight. From their sight. So he hid him from their sight. And they, look, they were looking intently into the sky as he was going. When suddenly two men dressed in white beside them said, Men of Galilee, they said, Why do you stand here looking into the sky? The same Jesus who was taken into heaven will come back for you in the same way you have seen him go. What a blessed hope. What a blessed promise. That's why I started off by saying, Accompanied with the ascension is a promise that was given and a promise that was kept. Amen. There is a beautiful hope that we have as believers that Jesus Christ, the same Jesus that, that ascended into heaven, will return. I want to share with you just a few key points about the ascension. It was a public declaration when Jesus ascended into heaven, there was a statement being made that confirmed the statement that he made on the cross when he said, it is finished. Jesus ascending to the Father, remember, he could not return to the Father until he fulfilled the work that he was assigned to do. And this is a picture of even our lives. We will not ascend unto the Father until we fulfill the mandate that God has given for our lives. He showed us that even in His bodily ascension to heaven, how this mortal will put on immortality, how we, when we pass on from this life, will be with Him. The Bible says He ascended unto the Father. The only way he could have ascended unto the Father is by fulfilling and completing his task, his mandate. We all have the same responsibility. Whatever is the mandate for your life, whatever is the purpose for your life, fulfill it. But also Jesus says, he says, if I go, in verse 20, uh, chapter 24, verse 49, he says, I am going to send to you what the Father has promised. It was important for him to go to heaven because without him going to heaven, the Father could not send the Comforter who is the Holy Spirit. So he says, I will send to you the Comforter who is the Holy Spirit, who will be your counselor, the one that guides us, and opens us into all truth. So the ascension covers also the, the sending of God the Holy Spirit. It came to the point of where he says, go and wait until you are clothed with power. Jesus knew that when he goes to the Father and he takes his place at the right hand of the Father, seated at the right hand of the Father, he will send the Holy Spirit. Not only will he send the Holy Spirit, but he says, now we have a high priest that makes intercession on our behalf before the Father. He doesn't go to heaven just to sit on the throne next to his Father. But the Bible says he is our advocate. He takes on a new role, interceding on our behalf. Until... Until the day that he returns. Until the day that we will see him again. We believe in the bodily return of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because the angels as they spoke to, the, to those that were gathered 
at the Mount of Olives, they said to them, they said to them, the same way you have seen him go, he will return. I want you to know there's a blessed hope. There's a blessed promise that is attached to the ascension of the Lord Jesus, that he is going to return. Not only was he resurrected, not only was he born, not only was he resurrected from the dead, but he ascended to the Father with the hope that he is returning for each one of us. So I want you to understand this, that even as we celebrate this day, we celebrate the return of the Lord Jesus Christ. We may not know the time, we may not know the hour, but we know he's coming back again. And so what do we do? Until he comes back again, we are clothed with power. I want you to, 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 to look at just three characters in the Bible who had an encounter with the resurrected Christ and their lives were transformed. Peter. He was one of the disciples of Jesus but he was fluctuating in his walk with the Lord Jesus Christ. After he encounters the resurrected Christ, his life is never the same again. He's the same one in the book of Acts chapter 2 after the outpouring of the Holy Spirit will stand up and as he would begin to address the crowd, 3,000 people would give their hearts to the Lord. The encounters with the resurrected Christ produced a different order of living even in Peter. He walked around and, 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 and we know how he, how he raised up the blind and, and he raised up the lame and, and many miracles were wrought by his hands. And even he went and he prayed for people and they received the Holy Spirit. You see, before he encountered the resurrected Christ, his life was up and down. Thomas, the disciple of Jesus that doubted, he says, only if I would see him, if I would put my hands in the piercings in his, on his hands and his, the piercings on his side, then I would know it is him. Went on to become one of the greatest evangelists. And many people received the gospel outside the Jerusalem. He went to Asia and to, to then what would now be called India. And, and many people that have came to the knowledge of Jesus Christ came through the ministry of Thomas. Paul, the apostle of Jesus Christ, once persecuted on the road to Damascus, has, a, has an encounter with the ascended Jesus life turns around. Goes on to write the greater part of the New Testament. You know the amazing thing about it is these three men all were persecuted for their faith. The power of encountering the resurrected Christ is a transformed life. The power of of encountering the ascended Christ is a transformed life. And when he ascended, the book of Ephesians says to us, he gave gifts to the church. He gave us the apostles, the prophets, the pastors, the teachers, the evangelists. He gave those giftings to the body of Christ. So there will be those that will go on teaching and doing the work, equipping the saints to do the work of the ministry. The ascension was not just a secondary act. It was a, a monumental day that set the platform for things to come. The power we experience in and the glory we experience in the church today was released on that day. So I want you to know today, Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father. 
you have a high priest that is touched with the feelings of your infirmities. I can assure you today, if you would allow him, the ascended Christ, the resurrected Christ, the advocate, the one that pleads on our behalf before the Father, a high priest that is touched with the feelings of our infirmities, if you would allow him into your life, you would experience great power. You would experience great victory. You would experience great breakthrough. Our God is a great God. Our God is an awesome God. This, this evening, as we close up the broadcast, I, I want to just share with you just a thought which Jesus did in, in the book of Luke chapter 24. There were two, Cleopas and another follower of Jesus that was on the road to Emmaus after the res resurrection of Jesus. And they encountered him. And so Jesus is, is entering into this conversation and they do not know who he is. And they're talking to him. And he asks them, what are you discussing? together as you walked along. And they were asking him, are you a stranger to Jerusalem? Do you not know what has happened in the past days? And he says, what things? And they started to tell about Jesus, to Jesus. What has happened and how he was crucified. And he spoke about the many great things that he was doing. And he continued the journey with them, hearing the different conversations that they were. And in verse tw uh, and verses 27, he said to them, How foolish you are, how slow to believe that the prophets have spoken. Did not the Messiah have to suffer these things and then enter into his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them the scriptures concerning himself. So Jesus was still answering. He was still clarifying aspects that they didn't understand about his journey and his message. And it was getting towards evening and they urged him to stay. And so he went with, to stay with them. And, in, and this is where I want to go in verse 30. When he was at the, the table with them, he took bread and when he had given thanks, he break it and he gave it to them. Then their eyes were open and recognized him and he disappeared from their sight. They asked each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road and he opened the scriptures to us. They got up and they returned once to Jerusalem. And they found the eleven with the eleven with them, and they assembled them together. And they says, "It is true, the Lord is risen. He appeared to Simon." And then the two said what had happened to them and how they did not recognize him until he broke bread. The Bible says, "As he broke the bread, their eyes were opened." He was breaking bread with them by sharing truth. But when he took the bread and he broke it, the physical bread, and he broke it, they understood. I believe tonight as we have an opportunity to partake of the table of the Lord together, that even as we receive this table of the Lord, I pray that your eyes will be open to the truth. That I pray that the breakthrough that you are trusting God for in your life will come. I pray that you, if you haven't known or you have backslidden or you've walked away from the plans of God or you've grown stagnant in your walk with Him, a new day will dawn. I declare today prophetically over your life 
the old is past. Behold, all things have become new. Behold, all things have become new. You are a new creation in Christ Jesus. I declare you would not think the same way you thought before. You would not act the same way you have acted before. You would not talk the same way you have spoken before. You will begin to allow the grace of God to begin to flow through your life. And I can tell you that the lives of your family, your lives of your home, your local church will never be the same again. I ask that the truth of God's word will begin to become real in your life. And like the men on the road to Emmaus, they says, didn't our hearts but burn within us as he began to reveal the scriptures to us. I pray that you would read the word of God with new, with new lenses, with new insight. And God, the Holy Spirit, would clothe you with power. Would you partake of these emblems together with me today? Father, we love you. Father, we love you. It is our desire that you would be real in the lives of your sons and daughters. I pray that whatever they are trusting you for, you said make our requests and our petitions known to you. So tonight, as your people come before you, as they say, Lord, I'm trusting you, whether it be for their families, whether it be for relationships, whether it be, O oh God, for employment, whether it be for finance, whether it be for their children. Lord, you said if we call upon you, you will answer. And you will do great and mighty things. You says, knock and it shall be opened. Seek and you shall find. Ask and it will be given unto you. So tonight I challenge each one of you, knock, seek, ask. God has got great things in store for you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Amen. Have a blessed day. And may, God, may you continue in the strength and in the grace of God. Amen.